Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads. Today we're going to be continuing on with our snowboard build. This is going to be episode 6 in that series. 6 is getting to be a long one. And in this episode we're going to be tackling the sidewalls of the snowboard, which I have been procrastinating on. Let me explain why. Earlier in the series, I did a bunch of experiments about routing channels and pouring urethane into them, which should have been a really easy way to make sidewalls for a snowboard. And I was going to get started doing that, so I marked my center line for my core, I made some templates, and then I discovered this. I cut my core blank too narrow, and I didn't leave enough room for the channels for the sidewalls. Oh crud. What am I going to do? My plan for the sidewalls is a bust. Well, lucky for me, y'all are awesome. The comments on that earlier sidewall experiment video and the ensuing discussions on social media had tons of suggestions and approaches for different ways of doing sidewalls. So thank you for that. In addition to really enjoying getting to talk about techniques and building and the craft, uh, you guys also kind of saved my skin in this one. So here's the plan. I'm going to use the original routed channel technique for the nose and tail of the board. And for the sides, I'm going to riff on one of the techniques that was suggested in the comments. I'm going to cast a block of urethane material, slice my sidewalls from it, and glue it to the core. And with two techniques to cover, we've got a lot to tackle, so let's get started. First up, the routed channels. I needed templates for the nose and tail, so I traced those shapes onto some paper and drew the rough shape of the channels that I wanted. I grabbed some plywood and drew a center line. And then I transferred the channel shapes I drew for the nose and tail to my template. I rough cut the template using a jigsaw and a bandsaw. And then refined it on the belt sander. I wanted to make sure my channels were centered, so using a square, I dropped the center line down the edges of the template. If I line those marks up with the center line of the core, everything should stay nice and even. I clamp my template in place on the nose and routed two passes. This gives me plenty of urethane material in case things slide around during the layup. Then I did the same for the tail. The channels are looking good, so it's time to prep them for urethane. First I used painter's tape to close the sides of the channels. And then I gave them two coats of an oil-based polyurethane, sanding in between the coats. If you want to see a deeper dive on this technique, check out the sidewall experiment video. I'll link it down below. Now that the nose and tail are ready to be poured, we gotta work on that urethane block for the sides. And for that, I'm gonna need a mold. And I'm not doing anything fancy for that. I'm gonna make a trough or box mold out of eighth inch plywood. I held my mold together with hot glue, 
That should keep it sealed, and if I have any trouble getting it to release, it should be easy to take apart. While all of this was going on, I also decided to test some more of the urethane dyes that I had to get a better sense of my options. It's looking a bit like Easter in here, but getting an idea of what these colors look like will help me choose for the final product. I also did this little dual color experiment for funsies and whoa. Yeah, that looks really cool. We're gonna have to do something with that. Now it's time to get ready to pour. I coated the box mold with some petroleum jelly as a mold release. and then hit everything with a heat gun to drive out as much moisture as possible. Weighed and mixed my two batches of urethane. Poured it. and then hit it with a heat gun to drive out any bubbles. Oh dang, that kicked real fast. Real fast. The good news is there don't seem to be a lot of bubbles. Once the resin had cured, I pulled the tape off the nose and tail channels. And they are looking really good, not a bubble in sight. Next, I demolded my sidewall block and wiped it down with acetone to remove the mold release. I ran it through the planer a few times to square up two of the sides. And holy hell, that color treatment is starting to look exciting. Let's slice it in half and see how it came out. Yeah. That looks rad. I am really glad I decided to go this route. Those patterns are gonna look crazy on the sides of my board. I hit the bonding surfaces of my strips of sidewall material with some 80 grit so they would be nice and rough, and with that, they're ready for gluing. Next up, I use the base sheet as a template to cut the core into the right shape to receive the sidewalls. I offset it by less than the width of my urethane strips so I'd have a little extra material when it comes to shaping. I mark those lines, and then cut them out on the bandsaw. And these glue lines are going to be hidden inside the board, so they don't need to be perfect. I just ran a sanding block over them to quickly prep the gluing surface. Then I clamp my core in place. mixed some epoxy, and glued my sidewalls on. Once I had done that to both sides and the epoxy had cured, it was done. And believe it or not, this ugly messy thing is a finished snowboard core blank that's ready for profiling. And here it is. I cleaned it up a little bit because all the loose ends and resin blobs were kind of driving me nuts. And this build is getting fun because things are starting to come together. And I am really excited about these dual color sidewalls. And I'm not going to know what they look like until the final shaping of the board. But I'm really looking forward to see what kind of trippy 90s day glow colors we get in the patterns on the edges of the board. The next step of the build is going to be profiling the core, but I am not really confident in using my planer for that. I occasionally get issues with tear out or sniping, and I'm just not really willing to risk all the hard work I've done on a tool that I don't have complete faith in. So I'm going to build a thicknessing drum sander. And that's going to be the next video in the series. I hope you've enjoyed coming along with the ride so far. If you want to keep up with this project or see any of the other DIY board sport related stuff we do here on the channel, I'd love it if you subscribed. And if you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below. I do try to respond to as many as possible. And as you saw in this video, sometimes they can be really helpful. So thanks again. That's going to be it for this one. And until next time, I'll see you soon.